Hello everyone, welcome to Modeling with Mats here on YouTube. This is going to be my first video contribution to the channel. And what I'm going to do today is show you my setup in my house. And it is probably the bare minimum size space that you need to uh, work on your models and get stuff accomplished. And uh, I'll show you the tools and the stuff that I use here at home. And we'll talk about it, and yeah, let's get started. All right, here is my table. It is a small table fold up from Walmart. I believe it is four feet by a foot and a half, two feet at the most. This takes up no more than five feet of a any room. I'm in the bedroom, so this is probably the bare minimum size space you need to do uh, any kind of modeling. And if you can make it work in a smaller space, by all means. But this is the bare minimum I need. And let's see. We'll go left to right on the bench and show you the stuff that I have here. All right. First up, we have a small Tupperware for decal work. Pour water in here. And other times I put parts in here. Small parts. That way I don't lose them. Or I'll separate parts out in here. Like anything that needs to be a certain singular color I'll put in here that way I remember all these need to be flat black or whatever next we have is a paint palette I use this for when I have paints that don't have a lid where I can just dip a paintbrush in it and paint so I'll pour some in here and then in another spot I'll pour solvent to clean the paintbrush some exhaust here for a kit I have over there on the table we get to that and this here is this poster tack, sticky tack. What we use this for, we just tear off a tiny piece and we stick it on top of paint brushes, broken ones, ones you don't use, whatever. Sometimes I'll use screwdrivers, stuff like that. But as you see, I stick parts in there, paint it, and then stick it in a foam block to dry. If, uh, especially, <coughs> speaking of foam blocks, you can get foam uh, any, almost any hardware store has foam. I got this piece from work because I have uh, stuff that gets thrown away at work. Sometimes comes and stuff like that. So highly recommend you get a piece of foam if you plan to do stuff like this. They make paintbrush holders, but I believe you can probably get a piece of foam for probably next to nothing. Something like that. Uh, next up, I have spray paint. I use spray paint on stuff that I don't particularly want to hand paint or airbrush. A uh, exa great example is in, uh, chassis on cars. I don't need them airbrushed. It doesn't need to be perfect because obviously most of the time it's sitting down like that. And you're not going to be able to see underneath of it unless you pick it up. So. The main effort on me when I paint is the body of the car. That I want to be as perfect as it can get, whereas stuff like this, I don't particularly care that much. I do to a certain extent, just not as much as I do car bodies. So I'll paint stuff like that, smaller pieces like that, stuff like that, with spray paint. And, you know, Rust-Oleum brand spray paint you can get at Walmart is perfectly fine. That's what I use. I use mainly flat black, primer gray, and metallic here i use the metallic for chrome parts on cars that are blemished or have some sort of imperfection in them that i can't cover up or get rid of and i'll just paint it over with this it won't look very chrome but it'll still look metallic shiny and let's see next up we just have mineral spirits 91 percent al isopropyl alcohol i use these mainly for cleaning paint brushes this is the alcohol is good for acrylic based paints and i can't remember what this is good for but i need both of them that i do enamel i think enamel but need both of them and yeah there's another use for this that i will get into later in the video but for right now yeah uh toothpicks gotta have toothpicks cotton swabs uh stuff like that you'll need for doing many you know it's a tool of all 
trays, basically. You need it for a lot of things. All right. <clears throat> One thing I failed to mention earlier on the tour of the bench is get yourself a good lamp. I have a <clears throat> posable lamp LED from Walmart. I think it was less than 20 bucks, but it is very bright and like I said, it's posable. You can put it right over whatever you're working on. It is very handy. I love it. I highly recommend a lamp like this. But yeah, definitely a need good lighting when you're building models. But yeah, on to the next thing. Next up here, we have Micro Set and Micro Soul. This is for decal work. You put a drop of this in your water. And also, if you're doing decal works, make sure you're using, if you can, get distilled water because the, it is, there's no contaminants in it that's in tap water. But you'll put a drop of this in the water and then you'll brush some of this on the area you're putting a decal. You put the decal on the area and then after that dries, you'll put some micro sole on it to help suck the decal down flat to the space you put it on next we'll talk about some glues we have i use five different types of glues technically six we'll pull that one out too first up we use i use micro crystal crystal clear glue this is for windshields because it dries perfectly clear so windshields headlight lenses tail light lenses you'll want to be uh using some kind of glue that's crystal clear drying that way it leaves no uh, imperfections or staining so yeah all made by the same company micro scale i believe you can get it online anywhere almost amazon ebay for sure my main model supply website is sprubrothers.com and they definitely have this at all times. Next up on the glues, I use Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, Tamiya Regular Cement, and Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting Cement. This just dries faster than this stuff, so if I'm in a pinch, uh, I will use this stuff. And this stuff is thicker, so I can brush it on. All these have a brush applicator, and the brushes do extend from the lid, so if this gets low, just pull on the brush with a pair of tweezers and it will come out so you can get the last drop. Uh, next up on the glues, plain old Gorilla, glue, Gorilla brand super glue gel. I like the gel the best, but sometimes uh, when these don't work, this works, so that's why we have that. Lastly, it's not sold as a glue, but you can make it. And what it is, we call it filler or sprue goo. Now, what you do to make this is that when this starts getting empty or empty, not totally empty, you need some glue left in it, you will cut up plastic or sprue into tiny pieces, throw it in the glue, and it will dissolve into a thick paste. Now what and why on earth would you want to do that? Well, if you're building a model and you have a gap in something that you don't want to be there or shouldn't be there, you can fill it in with this stuff and it will dry hard as plastic and you can sand it down and paint over it. So it is definitely handy to have. Now, glues are out of the way. What? You will, what I use now for traveling over to Matt's place to the Matt Cave, I don't use 100% his stuff when I'm there. I bring a ta small tackle box you can get at Walmart to keep various things in. Now I have in here paint brushes, small tip paint brushes are probably my number one used paint brush because of. Uh, Small parts that I don't need to airbrush, I will paint with these. Uh, big paint brushes are fine. I don't use them for very much other than maybe dry brushing. Next in here, I keep our paint pens. I get most of my paint pens from Michaels, and I'm a huge fan of Jelly Roll brand pens. That would be these ones here. 
These are regular paint pens, and I only use the black ones, I believe, for this. But Jelly Roll, especially the silver one uh, for trim work and such, very handy. Uh, my the blue ones here are just a Walmart variety pack. I got a four pack of small tip white ones from a hobby show, but you can get them online at uh, Sprue Brothers or some similar website. But yeah, it's just a tackle box. We have clamps. I use clamps like this. I use spring-loaded clamps like this. Got these off of Amazon. The blue ones I got at a hobby store in the St. Louis area called Schaefer's Hobby, I believe is the name of it. But they sell those there. And they have a smaller one like that. Next up, I use Jewelers Snips. You got these at Walmart. They are very handy. I cut pieces off the plastic trays or sprued but yes that could definitely recommend it. uh let's see regular pair of tweezers these are a rounded tipped tweezers tapes for masking paint jobs i use these three mainly matt has a much wider one that i have used before but mainly i use these especially this one here Hobby store, online, they're there. All right, only other, that's just a paint marker. I use these guys, reverse pliers, or reverse tweezers, I'm sorry. They are spring-loaded to hold something like this. So if I need to clamp something to stay down, I will use these, or those, or those. And obviously, X-Acto knife, get him at Walmart. I use mainly just this one. I use it for scraping. Don't use it to cut parts very much, but use it for scraping quite a bit. All right, next up, sanders. Sadly, the ones I use by Flory are being discontinued or have been discontinued. So you won't be able to get these for very much longer, sadly. But you can get similar ones at you know hobby shops, online, whatever. But I use a fine, a medium, and a coarse most of the time. Sometimes I use a polisher, which is just a super, super fine sander. But yeah, mainly three different grits is all I use. When Sometimes I use a paper towel as a sander, believe it or not. It is a super, super fine grit sandpaper, so it'll be very helpful in building cars, especially doing body sanding after you paint it. Speaking of paints, here's the paints that I use mostly. Tamiya brand acrylic paint. Why do I use this? Because this works really well in airbrush. You can pour it in directly. You don't have to mix thinner in it most of the time. And it's just really good paint. Get it at hobby stores and online eBay Spru Brothers, what have you. Other brands I use, Model Air by Vallejo, and sometimes testers, but this stuff is not really good for much other than basic brush work. Like this is a turn signal amber, so that's the only real tester kind that I use, and once this is gone, I will probably switch over to a Tamiya brand. <clears throat> and let's see. So tackle box and all that stuff. Only other thing I recommend, or only things I recommend, are down here. I have a pair of magnifying lenses. You can get these at Michaels. Even maybe Walmart has these by now. Uh, highly recommended for working on small parts. Uh, and one of these small, didn't have to be very big, three drawer organizers for all your extra paints, pens, what have you other stuff i just put them all in there and yeah definitely recommend for storage the only other thing i use obviously some just rags for you know keeping stuff clean wiping stuff down i have one of these guys here it's an ice bin tray from walmart and it is big enough that i can put a whole car body 125th scale car body in this 
And what I will do, we'll go back to the isopropyl alcohol. I'm using acrylic based paints like Tamiya. If you screw up a paint job on the car so badly that you can't save it, I will put the car body in that Tupperware and pour this in it. And what this does, it will dissolve the paint off the model without hurting the plastic. It is, I have used it once or twice now and have been happy both times. I have tried brake fluid. It does work, but it makes the plastic brittle. So I'll only do that if I have to. And then if you mess up multiple times, it will make the plastic brittle, more brittle each time you use it. So if in a pinch, you can find brake fluid cheaper and easier than you can find 91% isopropyl alcohol. It is an option. But just let yourself be uh, aware that it will make the plastic brittle. I know I built a Chevelle and used that and cracked the body several places with it. And it turned out fine. I mean, I was able to fix it. But, but yeah. Only, uh, let's see. Model storage. I keep... One's down here, one's I'm working on, one's I'm giving away, whatever. I will put, put underneath the table. Model storage is important because once you start, you won't be able to stop buying. So those go under there. All the rest of my stash is in my closet. I have uh, those up there, and that's it. I have a problem. I don't intend to do anything about it, but... Everyone has a stash. There's my stash. That's just on the top shelf of my closet. So luckily they don't take up that much space as long as you're uh, just aware of the space that you have and try not to overbuy. But yeah, that is my setup for building models here. When I'm not at Matt's, I can do pretty much a whole model here except for painting the car body because I want to airbrush that and i don't have the capabilities of putting up an airbrush station just yet that is hopefully in the near future we'll figure something out but for now this is what i do go over to matt's place and finish them up there but yeah uh, thank you for watching the video if you uh, have any comments or whatever uh leave them below and like subscribe share all that good stuff and uh, until next time, happy modeling. Goodbye.